Hey friends, so thus far this week we have learned how to do our forwards weaves, we have learned how to do our reverse weaves, and today we are going to learn how to take both of these weaves into places that are collectively known as fountains and uh, mix up our levels just a little bit as we're doing so, yeah? Let's check it out. Drex here from DrexFactor.com, bringing you poise spinning and flow arts to benefit your brain and body in the COVID-19 lockdown. And today, we are going to learn how to do a very, very important trick to my own poi evolution called the fountain. Before we dive in, I just want to give a quick shout out to the friends of the channel. Big thanks to Dark Monk, Flow Toys, Pyrotair Light Toys, LMF Props, Spinballs, and Ultra Poi for helping to make the videos on this channel possible. You can learn more about all these different companies and the work that they're doing to support flow artists like yourself by checking out the links that I've got down in the description of this video. Oh my god, so um, I'm an idiot. I got halfway through recording this video and realized that I had forgotten to turn the mic on. So I taught so much stuff only to realize that none of it was stuff that I was going to be able to use. But that's okay. I will try and tell the same stories with just as much enthusiasm. So I'm going to start this off with a little bit of a story. That of a neophyte poi spinner living in Denver back in 2006, 2007, somewhere thereabouts, who discovered a local spin gym that got together every Sunday evening at a spot called Confluence Park on the South Platte River. Now going to these spin jams, this little neophyte poi spinner uh, encountered for the first time the flow arts community and a bunch of people that taught him his first few tricks. Yes, I am that neophyte poi spinner. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because in those early days, I put together the pieces that would eventually lead to me learning how to do the four beat fountain, which is equal parts waist wraps, as well as uh, getting up into a windmill. And when I put these pieces together, I seriously felt for the first time like Poi made sense to me. I felt for the first time as though I could see how all these pieces were going to arrange off into the future. And I felt like I could control the Poi in a way that I never had before. I could see transitions. I could see how things related to each other. And I could see how far I could take this whole thing. So I want to share just a little bit of that experience with you all. You know, um, mostly these tutorials have been on a single trick or a single concept. And this is the only video that I'm really doing in this series that is about the transition between two very specific tricks. And the reason is that it dates back to this journey for me. And I'm hoping it connects some dots for those of you out there who are on your own journey. So first, let's unpack the word fountain just a little bit, because it's one of these terms Terms in the poi world that is so old that like whatever definition it was originally meant to have has uh, kind of eroded over time. Um, so if you go back in the day and check out the uh, section on the Home of Poi website where it lists off all the different poi tricks out there and you look up the one that says fountain and oh my goodness am I showing my age right now. Uh, there was a very, very low resolution and poorly lit video of a person doing this. Now, you'll note, um, in terms of what the hands are doing, this isn't so terribly different from those inspin flowers that we played around with a couple weeks ago. The biggest difference is, is that the poise seem to be moving in split time, same direction, and the poi are veering back and forth across our bodies, like we're doing something like a tuck turn or a water mill, right? Um, basically, what a fountain in this case is, is I am treating a weave like it's a flower. And as best I can figure it out, that is really the essence of what people refer to as fountains. It is treating something that is normally not considered like a flower as though it is a flower. That is, it's going to entail going around in big circles, uh, like on the path of a normal flower, but with something that doesn't normally behave that way, yeah? So just to put this out there, that fountain that I was just showing, if you've already learned your waist traps, you already have all the pieces in place that you need to be able to do this. You know, when we do our waist wraps, we're essentially traveling back and forth across our body in a horizontal line each time we go back and forth between the reverse and forwards weave. To turn that into a fountain, all you actually have to do is have your hands go down or up in the same direction that the poi is. You're taking it down and around or up and over. When your right hand is going under, both of your hands go under. 
When your left hand is going over, both of your hands go over. That's all it is, adding up and down to something that was already going side to side, right? Okay, but that's not exactly the same thing as this move right here, which um, this is the actual move that I did while I was out in Colorado that really made the pieces come together for me. Uh, and that subsequently, um, I guess Nick Woolsey's dubbed this a four by four or four B fountain. Um, so what exactly is different about that? Well, you might've noticed that across the top, rather than keeping both of my hands in front of me, going between a reverse weave and a forwards weave, instead I have this moment where each of the poi goes around back behind their native shoulder, right? Um, this looks a lot like a windmill because it basically is. What we have done is we've taken a waist strap and we have basically cut off the top part of it and replaced it with a piece of a windmill. So let's dive into how we do that. This is gonna start off with you performing a reverse weave off to your left hand side here. Uh, and we're actually gonna take this in such a way that we're gonna go back to performing this weave uh, either from our elbows or our shoulders, I don't care which one, just so long as you get to see this moment where, remember how when I broke this down, I talked about there being a button that you press under Underneath each forearm that turns your upper body back and forth. Specifically, I want us to take a look at that moment when I'm pushing the button on my left forearm. It happens right here, right here, yeah? Now, what happens there is for a moment, my left hand is going back up and around towards me. Uh, it's about to reach underneath the right hand. Well, I'm gonna do something a little different. Because that hand and poi are reaching back around up, I'm instead going to let it fall behind my left shoulder and then my right hand is gonna fall behind my right shoulder. Let me show you that once again. Looking for that moment when I'm pushing the button. In three, two, one, as the left hand goes up, it goes behind the left shoulder and then the right hand also goes behind the right shoulder. Huh, doesn't that seem an awful lot like, uh, like our windmills? As is so often the case, the answer is yes and because we've gotten into a position that feels an awful lot like a windmill, but we have to get back out of it, and there's a trick to getting out of it. Now, when we turn over to our right-hand side here, the left hand's gonna come out first, just like it always did, but if we were doing this as a windmill, the left hand would stay in front of us, and the right hand would follow it around, right? We need to do something a little bit different here, and that is that rather than the left hand staying in front of us, the left hand is instead gonna reach under the right armpit, and that then becomes the prompt for the right hand to come back out. Let me show you that once again. Left hand goes underneath the right armpit, and then the right hand goes over it to start a forwards three beat weave. That is, the forwards three beat weave starts with the right hand over, over on your right hand side, yeah? So let's take a look at those pieces again. As I'm going into my reverse weave, I'm pushing the button in three, two, one, left falls, right falls, as I come out, left goes under the right, right goes over it, and we're back to a forwards weave. I'm gonna do the forwards weave once, twice, and turn to the reverse weave, and think three, two, one, drop the left hand, drop the right hand, turn, have the left go under the right, and come out into the forwards weave. In two, one, turn to the reverse weave, and in three, two, one, drop the left, drop the right, turn, left goes under the right, right goes over top, and we go into the forwards weave here, yeah? Okay, so let's try that again, only I'm gonna make the top side go a little bit faster, yeah? So, we go underneath three, two, one times, right, left, and then left goes under, into the forwards weave, yeah? Let's try that again. In three, two, one, left, right, and left goes under the right as I come out on the right-hand side here, yeah? All right, so let's try doing two reps of the reverse and forwards weaves on each of their sides, yeah? So thinking two, one, left, right, and two, one around to reverse, two, one, and left, right, left goes under, two, one, back to reverse, yeah? So I find that when you drop down to just a single rep of each weave, that is a single rep of forward, a single rep of reverse, that it helps to instead think of whichever hand is doing a beat kind of behind your body, yeah? So uh, the way I would think of it is being right behind, left, right, left, 
and then right behind, left, right, left. Does that make sense? Right behind, left, right, left right behind, left, right, left. And there's just a moment in front of us here where both of the poi are off in front of us uh, right before the right hand goes onto the left hand. Again, it's right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, yeah? Right, left, right, left, and right, left, right, left, yeah? Cool, so let's see that in slow motion from a couple perspectives. Awesome. So um, this is a trick that is awesome. So this is a move that is super near and dear to my heart because it was very, very important to me, especially in that first year of poi spinning. Um, and I hope that if this is not the trick that has that aha moment for you, that you do find a trick that has that aha moment for you at some point. So if you're enjoying these lessons but need a little bit more of a challenge and would like to skip ahead, uh, you can always sign up for my Spin Poi Like a Rockstar course over on my website at drexfactor.com. It's totally free. You just have to give me your email address. Um, you'll get uh, lessons sent directly to your inbox and in each email there will be a link where you can download all of the lessons in the series so you can take them at your own pace. Also, please show me your version of these tricks. Uh, post video to Instagram or Facebook and tag me. I am DrexFactor on Instagram and DrexFactorPoi on Facebook. There is nothing that makes me happier than watching people apply the things that I'm teaching. So uh, do please help me out in that department, yeah? Please help me get these videos out to the wider world. I think that we have such an opportunity right now to bring something to people's lives that is going to help them at a very, very, very chaotic time. Uh, and the best part of that is that we're going to have a lot more Flomies to hang out with after this is all said and done, yeah? Uh, so please make sure to like, share, and subscribe. And of course, tell your friends that this series is going on. And of course, if you are enjoying this series, if you get anything out of it and you would like to support the work that I'm doing, please consider signing up to support my work over on Patreon, like all these nice folks did. Um, Patreon is a voluntary subscription service and it is the thing that has kept my channel alive for the past few years and hopefully will continue to keep it alive for some time into the future. Um, if you have the means, and uh, I totally understand if you don't, but if you do, please head on over to patreon.com slash drexfactorpoi and sign up. You get early access to all of my content, plus you get to vote in topics that I might be interested in uh, pursuing in the future and everything. And well, it also would just help me out a lot at a really difficult time. So uh, please and thank you in advance. All right, so you know the drill. Tomorrow's Friday, which means that there's gonna be a new poi combo out there that's gonna incorporate elements from all the past five weeks of poetrix that we've been learning. So tune in then. Peace.